Hi, I'm Ivanka Sankasari, a high school student passionate about environmental issues. Welcome to Methane Matters, an initiative dedicated to reducing methane emissions. In the last video, we briefly covered methane emissions and their impact on climate change. As we know, about 40% of total methane emissions come from livestock, with cattle contributing to about 86% of methane emissions from livestock. Today we'll cover how dairy and livestock produce methane emissions and discuss ways to mitigate them. Methane is produced through two main processes, manure and enteric fermentation. When livestock animals digest their food, they produce manure as a waste product. This manure contains organic compounds like proteins, carbohydrates, and fibers. This organic matter is broken down by microbes in the manure like bacteria and archaea. As they feed on the organic matter, methane is made as a byproduct. From cattle, around one-third of methane emissions are from manure. Enteric fermentation occurs in the digestive system of livestock animals, mainly ruminants, like cows, sheep, and goats. These animals have a four-chambered stomach that houses many microbes. As the animals digest their food, the microbes in the rumen, which is the first chamber of the stomach, ferment the organic matter. This produces volatile fatty acids and methane. The methane is then released through the animal's nose and mouth. In cattle, around two-thirds of methane emissions are from enteric fermentation. So how can we reduce methane emissions from livestock? Some methods include feed additives, selective breeding or gene editing, vaccines, or nutrition management. In this video, we'll cover feed additives. In a future video, we'll cover other methods of reducing methane emissions. So what are feed additives? They're substances added to an animal's diet to fulfill a specific need. The feed additives we're talking about here are meant to reduce methane production. They can include plant compounds, essential oils, lipids, and more. Now we'll talk about specific examples and how each of them works. One feed additive is red seaweed. Red seaweed contains bromoform, which is a naturally occurring plant compound. When added to cow feed, bromoform reduces methane production by inhibiting an enzyme that is responsible for producing methane. Bromoform also reduces the population of methane-producing microbes in the rumen, which are known as methanogens. Red seaweed has been shown to cause a 60 to 90 percent reduction in enteric methane emissions. The more feed additives are tannins and saponins. These are both plant compounds coming from different plants. Tannins and saponins also reduce enteric methane emissions by inhibiting a methane producing enzyme and reducing the population of methanogens. Additionally, tannins and saponins alter the pathway of fermentation, making it produce less hydrogen. Since methane needs hydrogen to form, this produces less methane. Tannins have been shown to reduce methane production by 30%. There have been many other feed additives that have been studied besides the ones I've just mentioned. Some of them are garlic, some organic acids, and certain essential oils. Most of these also work by reducing methanogen populations, inhibiting methane-producing enzymes, or altering fermentation pathways. These feed additives offer one solution to mitigating methane emissions from livestock. By incorporating these plants or compounds into animal feed, we can reduce the environmental impact because of agriculture, while also promoting animal health and productivity. All in all, methane emissions from dairy and livestock are a significant concern. However, by understanding how methane is produced and implementing solutions like feed additives, we can reduce these emissions. Join me in taking action and spreading awareness to reduce methane emissions. Together, we can make a difference.